Assalamu alaikum, Brother Ricky. Wa alaikum salam, sir. How are you? Good, good, good. Thank you for sitting down once again for Behind the Final Call cover story. Very special edition. Um, on this paper is volume number 39, number 22. Date on the paper is March 10th. It's been a little while. We haven't been on the scene since before Savior's Day, but we're right back getting it in, getting right back on track. I'm glad that you're here with us. It's just good to have you here. I'm going to leave it like well, that. Well, it's good to be here, sir. Assalamu alaikum. Be, um, I mean, man, it's really a lot. Uh, Savior's Day, the whole weekend. We haven't even talked about the dinner. It's the final call, 40th anniversary dinner. And we really thank all of you for your support. The ballroom was absolutely filled at the TCF Center on February 21st, that historic night. Almost 1,500 people as we marked our 40th anniversary. I mean, a great program. And if you go to ny.org, I think you can still see it right now. So go there and check it out. Um, the town hall meeting with uh, Dr. Ava Muhammad in Detroit, another great success. Um, again, I think that's online, too, if you go yes. to ny.org. And, of course, the minister's lecture, not Sunday, but the previous Sunday, February 23rd. I mean, just incredible. Uh, thousands and thousands of people. I mean, he was... The doors opened at 12, the program started at 2. By almost 4 o'clock, there were still people lined up to get into here. So on this past Sunday, we had part 2, Jesus is the Key. So in looking at that really phenomenal address, that's how we came up with the cover. Um, and I just have to say what the Honorable Elijah Muhammad advised us, man. Continue to hear our Minister Farrakhan because... What this man is saying and being blessed to explain to us in terms of the reality of God, the reality of Scripture, and what it means for us today in our lives is so, so important. So we're not talking about a mystery God or mysterious events. We are talking about things that literally happen and are happening in the lives of us as a people that we need to be aware of. So, I mean, a great lecture of Mars Marianne was full. The minister was full. Um, we have part one, which is really just an introduction. The minister's article is week. It is just an introduction, but it is so powerful uh, that we, we, are, we are guessing we may have to do uh, two or three parts. I mean, literally, for his message this past Sunday, we, we generally try to avoid doing that because we want to, you know, kind of give people something that they can digest and manage, but get this week's paper. Read that first uh, set, that part one of uh, G Jesus is the Key, which is the Minister Center article. Brother uh, contributing editor James G. Muhammad, who we recognize for his role as editor-in-chief on February 21st, gave him a nice award. Um, great article here. Minister Farrakhan reveals the true and full understanding of Jesus because there's something about this man, Jesus, not, not 2,000 years ago. And that's been our problem. We look at scripture as if it's history as opposed to prophecy. History is that which will happen. No, history is that which has happened, past tense. Prophecy is that which will happen. Uh, future perfect tense, right? So... There may be signs in the past of something that will happen in the future. So there was a there was a historical Jesus. And as the minister taught Sunday very beautifully, I believe the largest crowd that this man ever taught was fewer than 40 people. That's right. And he taught in the tiny state of Palestine. But there was something about him, this historical one, and we are taught that when he realized that he was not the one who would bring in and usher in this new uh, world and, and break the civilization of the Jews. He gave his life for his mission. So now there's one that comes in the last days, in the final days. And so now when we look at what's hap what has happened in the world, what is happening, there are very few signs that have not been fulfilled. Very few. So we're taught that this sudden final 
kind of cataclysmic event that happened at any time. Yes, sir. And I believe the Honorable Elijah Muhammad said that if you've seen all of the signs and the final judgment hasn't happened, that's a sign to you that it could come at any time. Yes, sir. And I think we've had some some major uh, events that have brought us like to the brink of this all-out uh, destructive war of Armageddon, which we which is prophesied. We had it. I thought 9-11, when the, when the planes hit the Twin Towers. That was certainly an explosive moment where it looked like, man, any minute, this thing was going to blow up. We just had it a couple months ago with the ratcheting up of tension between the U.S. and Iran and the U.S. killing the Iranian General Soleimani on Iraqi soil. It's like, man, it's right to that point again. So we need to pay attention. And as the minister spoke so eloquently, and you can get his message at NOI.org, or you can go to store.finalcall.com as well, uh, and you can get, get the last two lectures because they're really, they're really uh, I don't want to say twins, but they're complementary. Right, exactly. They go together. They go together. So the minister's message on March 1st is a complement to his message on February 23rd. You know, it's kind of like a, a part two, if you will. Yes, so you need to get both and, and really kind of listen and hear and think and consider what is happening today. Um, how does it impact black people? Yes, uh, why should we be paying attention? But, I mean, it was a, it was a great lecture. He was in great spirits. Um, and, I mean, just a wonderful, wonderful uh, explanation uh, and information and, and inspiration. Yes, sir. You know, and, that uh, that we can use. And one of the things is that you that you said that I think is an important note to have. It's the value of listening to the word, and there's mm-hmm. another value that you get out of reading the Absolutely. word. Absolutely. And it's important that you do both. And I'm glad that you mentioned that. Is that when we have these articles in the paper of the minister, it's important to know that there's in most instances they're excerpts. Absolutely. So don't limit yourself and say, well, I, I read the article, I read a piece of the lecture and think you got it. Right. Because even if you re- listen to the whole lecture multiple times, even if you read the lecture in the paper, it's still not enough. So whenever you have the opportunity, those lectures that appear in the paper, make sure you grab those lectures, pick them up from Final Call, dot com or store dot final call dot com and take the opportunity in many instances they're available mp3 and you can listen to it and not just listen to it you can feed on the word yeah because you know these uh, i mean again this was so important so brother james the main article which is available at final call dot com does a great job of summarizing that message i mean these are really but what would you expect from the former final call have they cheat that's what he does so oh like it like us and do the thumbs up and, and subscribe do all of that stuff too you know so that when this comes on you get the notifications but um so inshallah next week unless the minister comes forward with something else i mean that that's why it's so challenging because this man as he said during savior's day he never stays on the last thing that he did. For him, that's yesterday. So we pray a lot that we will get a chance to bring you part two um, because we brought you part one, again, an introduction, but a powerful, uh, I mean, uh, but, a, but a really powerful introduction and a great compliment to Brother James's article. So we try to give you something from both. We don't try to... Um, you know, repeat every say everything in the article, in the news article, and then repeat it in the minister's center article. We try to give you as much as we can, um, so that you will get a, a great understanding. But I'm telling you, uh, this one, Jesus is the key, and I mean, this, I mean, literally, brother, this this whole brother, Rich, we're not gonna get it to him. It is available yeah, online. Go to noi.org slash SD2020. This is a lecture. I've been registered. I know you got some years on me. I've been registered for um, about 20 years now. Mm-hmm. Yeah, about that, somewhere in there. Mm-hmm. Actually, 22 years, but that's a whole different story. Mm-hmm. But the thing with that is that I learned a lot from this lecture. Mm-hmm. I got a, a deeper insight into what I already thought that I knew and understood take the opportunity for you to do the same. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, and again, remember, 
we are taught that our Savior, the great Matthew, the Master Farad Muhammad, had to study, what, 42 years to deliver us? And we're talking about the one that we call God in person, the supreme being of the universe. The one who has the power to judge and to move and to destroy and to save and to heal and to deface. That one, right, had to study 42 years. So the minister said he had that potential, but he had to grow into it. So I'm just saying, brothers and sisters, look, um, again, the beautiful thing to me about the nation is that you always have the opportunity, opportunity to look, to think, and decide for yourself. Yes, sir. Look, think, and decide for yourself. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So let's, let's jump into some of these other articles, and we'll end on the minister again as well. But, of course, everybody know about this virus that's going on. Yeah, man. Um, and, of course, you have some coverage of that. Yeah. Can you give us a little bit about our well, perspective? Well, this is, this is the coronavirus um, and so we're dealing with this is a virus, of course, that uh, came out of China, um, and we're seeing it is now spread in a deadly way. It's interesting to me that, in particular, it is spread throughout Europe. That's kind of fascinating to me. It has really struck that part of the world, and the place where it has at least struck is in Africa. There's a lot of uh, there's a lot of concern. At least right now, the death rate from this disease, according to something that I saw um, a uh, uh, a few days ago, the death rate from this coronavirus is like twenty times the death rate from the flu. Right? It doesn't. So, so that doesn't mean that millions of people are dying. Right? It just means that you got a certain number of people who die from the flu. So let's say if one person dies from the flu. 20 people are likely to die from this virus. And then you scale it up, right? So there's still questions about how many people have the virus and so forth and so on. So there are questions, though, even you got to read the piece about what is the policy of the Trump administration regarding this. Because there have been many who have said that, and if you listen to the president, he has spoken mainly about could this virus impact the economy? Well, how would that happen? If public places are shut down because there's a health problem uh, or a health emergency, the schools are shut down. You already have businesses where people are being urged not to come together and come to work, they're being urged to work from home. You know, so these things start to have a ripple effect. If, if factories or a factory have to close, if you have to start moving people and things around, uh, because you don't want people in close proximity catching this, uh, catching this disease. So these are all uh, significant things, right? And so Mr. Trump has seen more concerned about that kind of impact and what it will mean for them politically than the public health aspect. And that should be, I think, a little scary. Yes, sir. Because if you're not looking at the public health aspect, and then there were questions about even who he put in charge, initially what they said. Some of the states have concerns that the federal government wanted to do the testing, and by them holding that power to themselves, you eliminate states being able to test people and rule people out. Of health. So if, I, if, if you can take a test, and I can say yes or no, whether you got it, I don't have to try to monitor you. At some point, we're talking about monitoring like 8,500 people in South Carolina. So there are all kinds of things related to this. Um, keep an eye out for it. I mean, I, I just think about, I mean, again, scripture, widespread death, you know, and all of these things that are prophesied to come uh, in the last days. But to me, it's been very interesting that so much of Europe has been really struck by this disease. Yes, and we, we have to lean on much guidance that we've been given from the Honorable Elijah Muhammad and his representative in our midst, the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan, in terms of what we eat and our yeah. diet. Yeah. Um, we're taught to stay away from large crowds of, of people who are not in our best interest. Mm -hmm. um, so we're, we're given guidance and things that we should do that can decrease the chances of us being touched by this. And so we, basic, basic cleanliness. Yes, sir. Washing of your hands. Um, not, not, not spreading 
when you got a cold. I mean, just really basic stuff, keeping your home clean, um, basic things, you know, wiping doorknobs and such. So we don't want people to panic, but we do want people to be careful because we know um, that there have been uh, memos and plans that have been revealed over the years about culling the population of the earth. That's Especially right. getting rid of certain numbers of people because they're just not deemed important. That's right. And I think that when we look at the history of these of this people, the Caucasian people, man, look, if somebody would have told you they're gonna drag some people into slavery all the way across the Atlantic Ocean, they're gonna do it for four hundred years. So that means somebody had to come up with this idea. Somebody had to build the ship, somebody had to stop and supply the ship, somebody had to insure the ship. Somebody had to raise funds, funds, investors had to invest in the journey for this human cargo. So there was a whole mindset and a whole industry that went into that, man. That was no haphazard, all you're doing is picking, picking fields in the cotton. I mean, picking cotton in the fields, much bigger than that. Talk about a whole global industry. So what did that cotton do? That cotton was turned into land. That lint was then made into cloth, so now you have a whole uh, textile industry emerging. Now you have cotton and such being shipped over to Europe, in particular by members of the Jewish community, where they were. So there are Jewish slave owners in the South. Were they the only slave owners? No, but they were among slave owners. And they connected with their brethren in Europe to take the raw to take to go from the raw material all the way to the finished product and garments. So we should never I mean, now, now again, just like you take out a mortgage on a car, right? Or you take out a loan on a business today. These people took out loans on us. That's right. Why? Because we were an investment. We were an investment. So if I bought, if I purchase a, a Negro male, I assume he's going to produce X for me over his lifetime, right? These people were coldly calculated businessmen. So even the transatlantic slave trade itself, when you look at the numbers of people who died, imagine these people calculated a certain loss of what they call cargo and still and still factored in that, making a profit. The industry could not have survived if it was not profitable. So these are the kinds of things that, that we need to, to understand when we look historically. And then when we look at the punishment that the Honorable Black Muhammad said these people would suffer, for doing us, doing these things, and subjecting us to a type of cruelty never seen before, not like this, in the history of this planet, ultimately is for our good. That's right. But the suffering is real. Um, so, of course, a lot, you mentioned the um, election coming up soon, and the, the number of candidates in the Democratic primaries are decreasing and dwindling. Yeah. Uh, looks like Biden is probably going to be that one. Well, we'll see. Right now, it look, looks like he's fighting it out right now with uh, Bernie Sanders. Mm -hmm. um, but today is, is it the second, the third? What's the day? Third? Yes. So today is Super, super Tuesday. So that means in 14 states and one territory, people will be voting in the Democratic presidential vote. That'll happen. So again, we know that, that Joe Biden had an incredible comeback in South Carolina because of who? Black people. His candidacy was dead. Black folks resurrected it. Now he's kind of being repositioned as a um, front runner or at least somebody to challenge Bernie Sanders. But the question that I don't need too many people talking about is what are black folks in South Carolina going to get? For savings. What are black folks going to get for saving us? Or are we only valuable during the primary and then in the general general election, you just tell us y'all just come on with us. We'll take you yeah, at some point later on. You got to stop that, brothers and sisters. We got to be wiser than that. And this is why many of the young people are kind of fed up with the politics. They're fed up with that. They want to know, man, what are they going to get? And everybody else, that's the question. What am I going to get? Yes, sir. We need to ask the same thing. And we need to be wise about how we how we do. So as the minister said, vote your interests, but don't be a fool.
Um, we're going to jump to Mississippi prison violence, the result of decades of neglect and indifference. Can you give us a little bit about that? I mean, and then we'll jump to yeah. international well, news. This has been, um, I mean, just really uh, a, 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 a terrible situation with the, in Mississippi with the Department of Corrections. Um, there have been about 17 men and women who have died in four penitentiaries in, in, in Mississippi. So there's been fights, there's been stabbings, there's been <coughs> health issues, there's been we don't know how the person died in Mississippi. Um, and it just, it, it fits a pattern you know, of what has just been done historically to us in particular um, in, these, in these places. So uh, this is, again, we wanted, we wanted to bring back a spotlight and share a little information so that we, can, as a people, always remember, <coughs> excuse me, that... <coughs> This is a fight. Yes, sir. You know, we said we celebrated the 40th anniversary of the final call from 1979 to 2019. We had a great dinner uh, February 21st. But that question that the minister asked literally 40 years ago, uh, the ultimate challenge, can we survive? Remains a very real question. And, and we have to not only answer the question, We've got to take those actions and engage in the activity that actually save us. That's right. So this is serious business. And, and I mean, it, you, you touched on it. It's going back to, it's a very in, crucial period in time in history. And I'm not going to pretend to be the expert that understands it completely. But just the minister's election in the time that we're in, the 40 years. And the question that he posed is how strong is our foundation? Part of our foundation is seeing that man of God that's in our midst properly. Absolutely. And we, we will only be able to go so far without having a proper light well, and proper perspective. Well, the, the, see, this is at, at the end of the day, this man, Elijah Muhammad, met with God or he didn't. See, there, there's no two ways about it. And so that meeting, then things unfold related to that prophetic meeting, related to that divine intervention. And so if that happened, how can this man, Louis Farrakhan, start with zero in 70 years? Right? To where now, I mean, this is something that Brother Ishmael Muhammad has said that I really have been thinking about. No other group, except for the nation of Islam, has been brought back from its former glory after being destroyed by the U.S. government. In particular, with his counterintelligence programs of the 60s and the 70s, and even some work in the 80s and the 90s and ongoing um, surveillance, uh, infiltration, disruption to prevent the rise of a black messiah. And you can take that a couple different ways. But it's interesting that that language is used. That language was used by J. Edgar Hoover as he attempted to destroy and prevent, not just prevent, but absolutely a, a obliterate any possibility that, that these black groups will come together. Yes, sir. But the nation is back. I mean, the minister had about 15,000 people plus in Detroit. Not to mention the Million Man March, the 20th anniversary of this year. Not to mention this is the 90th anniversary of the Nation of Islam. Not to mention we just celebrated the 40th anniversary of the Final Call newspaper. And you have Muslims working in communities all over the country. Some Muslims now you're holding political office. You have Muslim doctors, Muslim lawyers, Muslim teachers, Muslim farmers, Muslim urban farmers. Brothers working in the prison. So we are all over. Yes, sir. Um, and so this this continued work that we're doing, um, we're not we, we have not completed the assignment, and we have not at this point reached the economic heights. But I would say the minister has, in making the commission of the honorable yeah, life known, right? Because that was his job to take this man who had been discarded, whose teachings had been discarded, to lift him up. And the scripture says, "If I be lifted up, I will draw all men unto me." So the minister for the last forty-four years, basically, has been lifting up. 
the old black Muhammad and his teacher. He ain't been teaching on himself. I mean, think about that. He ain't been saying, come, come to me, I'm the one. He's been saying, Elijah Muhammad. Elijah Muhammad, Elijah Muhammad, Elijah Muhammad. Elijah Muhammad. And so, but out of that flows, you know, certain realities in terms of, of, of spiritual realities, in terms of scripture and, and roles that people will play. We really got to get out of this mysterious thinking. Yes, sir. That it's about somebody 4,000 years ago, 6,000 years ago, 2,000 years ago. But yet not not see the relevance of all these things to what is happening today. What is the good of 2,000 years ago if it can't help me understand what's happening today? That's right. So, again, you know, when, when we look at these things in, in terms of, again, read it, study it, listen to it, evaluate it, critique it, turn it upside down, inside out, do whatever you want. You know, again, one of the things that got me in the nation of Islam was that I was never told, take my word for it. Right. Yes, sir. I was always told, study, prove it for yourself. Mm-hmm. I was always told, if you got a question, ask it. And if we know the answer, we will answer it. If we don't know the answer, we will seek that information for it. That's right. So to me, that's honest. To me, that's logical. So we're not asking you to just, on blind faith, accept. We're saying, hey, man. This is our argument. This is our position. This is our evidence. But the problem is, most of us don't know what we think we know yes, sir. about Scripture. We really don't. We, we really don't. We know some things that have been said to us that we have repeated. But we've not, and, and then we, we may have studied, but, you know, with all due respect, our study has been a kind of limited study. You know, from the time. Even that they gave us slave Bibles where they removed certain teeth. And, and I'm gonna have to cut you off because we we're getting okay. tons of time, and you can tell that we, Brother Rich, is definitely full of the spirit yeah. from hearing yeah. the Honorable yeah. Minister Lewis Prime. So, so we're gonna jump N-O-I. to N-O-I. 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 and you can get those lectures. Get them all, and that's that's what you hear coming from him right now. Because if you haven't heard the message, um, you just need to watch. it. So let's quickly jump into international news. Can you just hey, give us a few things about what's going on like in international news? Yeah. Yeah. Um, we got, um, we got, um, 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 we got, um, um, so, so we got uh, Britain um, is now um, dealing with the, um, trying to create a new kind of economic kind of, um, um, an economic kind of, uh, um, Reassertment, if you will, right? Um, in, in terms of uh, in terms of as Britain exits the, the European Union, right? So now, now that they're exiting the European Union, Britain Britain is now trying to um, um, find a find a uh, Britain is now trying to find a way to cover this economic gap. So you can check that out. We also had the passion of the late Egyptian leader, uh, Hosni Mubarak. Um, so we know that Mubarak at what time was really the strong man of Egypt. We saw him being, we saw him be taken down. And so it's a, it's a, it's a pretty, um, pretty interesting uh, situation. So you want to check that out. The other thing is now uh, we know that in, in the Sahel, which is kind of like northern Africa, uh, uh, Libya, um, uh, up around in that area, that there's now plans um, by the uh, for the Western Union to d- deploy about three thousand troops in that area. Um, so you also have, we know that France has been involved in that area. We know that America has, has, has expanded its uh, Africom forces in the motherland too. So again. You know, for example, you look at, and you've seen in, in Mali, you've seen in, in Nigeria, you've seen in, in other places in particular in that area, this violence, what they call this kind of Islamic extremism. Most of it linked to, a good amount of it linked to the destruction of Libya. The destruction of Libya. And now... Remember, under your President Obama, with his Secretary of State, Hillary Clinton, they destroyed 
the rule of Brother Muammar Gaddafi. After he came in from the diplomatic code, gave up his weapons of quote unquote mass destruction and all of this, was working to unite Africa, and he was supposed to be being readmitted into the world community. What did we see? We saw rebellion inside the country and we saw attacks on him. And Brother Gaddafi said back then, look, this is Al Qaeda, this is the same people that you are fighting that are coming up against me. But the West didn't want nobody to believe that, so what did we see? We saw the whole destruction of Libya and all of these forces being unleashed. So now this problem of quote unquote terrorism and extremism comes from North Africa and starts to spread west. Um, and it, it, is, it is destabilizing, it is, it is, it is, it is, it is deadly. So you even had, you got two or three different governments ruling Libya now. You've had the death of thousands of Africans who have been trying to, you know, Libya is, 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 is relatively close to Europe once you get to that, get to that, to that, to their shoreline. Libya, Italy, Europe, right? So it's just been hell, man. It's just been hell. So thousands of Africans losing their lives uh, and trying to make the journey. Others, thousands being imprisoned in, in Libyan jail. Others being uh, literally sold into slavery. All of this the result of, of, of the U.S. intervention along with uh, NATO and under, again, your president, your first black president, Barack Obama, and his Secretary of State. So I think I heard him say once that one of the things that he uh, regrets is that they couldn't foresee what the destruction of Libya would bring. Well, you should never have gone in in the first place. What did you expect? What did you see in Iraq? What did you see? What did you see in Syria? What did you see every place that you have gone in the name of bringing freedom, justice, and equality, and all you bought was death, destruction, starvation, and suffering. So it's not enough to say we didn't plan that. Yeah. No, you should have stayed out of that. But you wanted Gaddafi dead. Now you got him dead, and now you're wreaking all kinds of havoc on the lives of thousands of people. So anyway, check that out in this week's paper. Yes, sir. I'm going to jump to, because we're, we're crushing for time, I know you want to touch on this editorial. Yes, sir. Absolutely. Where's Weinstein? You know, Harvey Weinstein was convicted uh, about a week ago or so, almost two weeks, I guess now, of a couple rape charges. You know, Harvey Weinstein, the big movie mogul, who was the poster boy for the Me Too movement, um, <coughs> calling for an end to the sexual... <coughs> Sexual exploitation and targeting, right, of, uh, of 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 women. You know, Mr. Weinstein was convicted, but where's the news coming? Where's the special? Where's the late night breaking news? This man was accused by over 100 women. This man had a long career of 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 being allegedly part of this casting couch situation in Hollywood. And the reason why it bothered me was you've had so many black men who have been accused, but they ain't been to trial. There have been accusations. Right? Kobe Bryant. The man is dead. Now you're dragging up a case that never even went to court. It's not even a case. It's not even a case. When it doesn't go to court, it's not even a case. It's an allegation. It's a charge. It's a claim. And the white woman, and again, white woman, who filed this claim against him, she lied. If you look back at a couple of editorials in the final call, you will see that we pointed out how she lied. She admitted she lied. Now, we are not for the, for the rape or the uh, abuse of anyone. That's As a right. matter of fact, in the law of Allah, the penalty for rape is death. So let's be clear on that. But to have some, to me to have so much focus on black men who were never charged 
And here you have the white man who was the poster boy, charged and convicted, and there's no discussion of his case. There's no, I mean, I'm talking about full force examination. I mean, of course, there were a couple things here and there. But to me, as I said in, in, in the editorial, where's Weinstein? The problem with minor coverage of a major case. This was a watershed case at a major social and cultural moment in this country. So if Mr. Weinstein was one of the main perpetrators, shouldn't you want to blast that all over the world? All, I mean, shouldn't you want anybody that's abusing a woman to know your time is up? That's right. And Weinstein is your example. And if you mess over a woman, we're going to do you just like we did him. This is how we did him. This is how much years he can expect. This is what he's going to look like in the cell. His money ain't going to be able to save him. But we don't get that. It's like it's, like it's kind of come and gone. And so what that does, it raises again the question about were we talking about the targeting of black men? Again, we're not, we're not, we're, anybody that's guilty of sex crimes need to be punished to the fullest extent of the law. The Honorable Black Muhammad taught us, teaches us, and the minister 100% said to us, respect and protect the black woman, period. As a matter of fact, in Detroit, most of the people in the line... 334 o'clock still trying to get in to hear the minister but women. But women wrapped around the a hallway of the TCF Center in Detroit. So my point is we have to look. And this does not exonerate any black man from any damn wrong. In particular when it comes to black women. None. But to me, this was such an important case because there was a verdict. It wasn't hearsay. It wasn't uh, uh, gossip. And he was a man with the money to defend himself. So it wasn't like he was at a disadvantage. So he had the best lawyers, the best possibilities, the best defense. He's convicted. That should be major. So I'm very, uh, I don't know what the word is, unhappy. That ain't even the word. That ain't strong enough. But this double standard. And, but that's why you need to read the final call so you can get some perspective on what's happening in the world and not be held captive to what your enemy tells you was going on. Yes, sir. We're, we're not going to be able to get through all of these, but there's a lot of coverage on many of these workshops Great that occur Great at Savior's Day. And we're gonna, I'm, I, I'm going to do my best, and I'm going to work on seeing if we can make some of these um, workshops available for yeah. you to view them. Um, there was a big one, a very one that a lot of energy was put in, which was the youth took center stage. And that one is, was actually a, comp a compilation of several different groups giving mm -hmm. different perspectives on things that youth are doing and mm -hmm. what they can do and what they should be considering. There was a youth entrepreneur. There was um, preparation for life and land on our own, which ties in um, the separation movement. There was how to prepare for Hive. There was marriage, the cornerstone of marriage. Did I say that right? Marriage, marriage the cornerstone, cornerstone of nation. Right. Um, there was uh, international affairs and people from across the world on how they can enter into international trade and, and, and get the money right. Um, God is man. It was a panel discussion on point number 12 of the Muslim program. Protecting the image of the black woman. Um, the list goes on. There were several workshops. The focus was really to tie in to the Muslim program. Um, there was a, a viewing of a, a, a video called Push Out, the Criminalization of Black Girls in Schools. I don't want to forget nobody. Of course, the Ministry of Education had a piece that was done, and I, by Allah's grace and permission, I was blessed to be on that panel. Um, there was a panel on discussing medicine and business. And medical careers. Med and medical careers. Right down to the modern time. And also dealing with the medical industry. Um, there was growing food, the um, seed, which is a project that's in, going on Alabama. in Tuskegee, Alabama. Of course, there was the MGT class. There was the FOI class. There was the Nation of Islam graduation with the keynote address by the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan. There was Children's Village. The list goes on. Check out the paper. All of this was brought. You all, the only way you're going to get all of this and be able to see all of these beautiful pictures is if you get a subscription, if you get the digital edition, or you see the, these brothers that's in the street, and you get the paper from them. 
support black independent news, support people who are doing something to improve the condition of black people. Let's not just talk about it. Let's not just read about it. Let's do something about it. And you can do that by supporting. Actually, the and again, we had 7350 South Stony Island Avenue, the foodie spot, black owned business, right in the community, good food, good people. You'll feel welcome. You'll feel embraced, you know, and, and you'll get something good. So we want, we're always here to spotlight the continued work and development uh, that we do. And the Honorable Black Mohammed's article, to kind of wrap it up, the black man must know the truth. All right. The black man must know the truth. So we have a minister talking about Jesus is the key, part one. Oh, okay. And the Honorable Black Muhammad comes back with a great article. The black man must know the truth. So finalcall.com, get the digital version, get the oh, digital yeah. version. Uh, go to the website, get it from the brothers on the street. But stay tuned. You know, we're trying to stay up. We want you to stay up. Until next time, behind the final call, cover story. Peace. Assalamu alaikum.